Hello and welcome to the calculator guide video on six uses for ratio mode on the Casio ClassWiz. I'm going to be showing you these on the Casio FX8385 GTX model of the ClassWiz, which is a suitable model for GCSE mathematics. It's also going to be completely valid if you have the Casio FX991EX or FX570EX models, or indeed any model of ClassWiz which has a ratio mode. So let's get started and have a look at the first of the six uses. So the first of the six uses is working out the cost of different amounts of an item that we want to buy. So let's take a look at the question. We have 2.5 kilograms of carrots, which costs £1.70. We need to work out the cost of 3.25 kilograms of carrots. So to access ratio mode, it's menu. And then from the FX85 GTX, it's option four. On the 991EX, it's option C, so right down in the bottom right-hand corner. So select this mode, and then we have two different choices of where we're going to position our unknown. Now for the first two uses I'm going to show you, we're going to use option two, and then we're going to switch to option one for the last four uses. And the way ratio mode is set up is that we have a known ratio, a complete ratio, between two different sides on the left hand side equals and then we have a ratio where we have an unknown part. So in this example we know that 2.5 kilograms costs £1.70 so we can fill that in on the left hand side. 2.5 is the weight and then the cost is £1.70. And then we move on to the right hand side where we know the amount that's 3.25 what we don't know is the cost and that is the unknown X that the calculator will work out for us. So if we press equals, here we have the cost. Let's just change that to decimal form, SD. And we know that the cost of those carrots will be £2.21. The second of the six uses is working out an original amount where we have a percentage either added on or taken off. And we have that reduced or increased price and we want to find out what the item originally cost. So let's take a look at the question. A voucher takes 15% off the bill after using the voucher. The bill for the meal is £27.20. How much was the bill before using the voucher? I'm going to press AC to go back to the input screen and AC just to reset that. Now what we need to think about here is if we have 15% taken off of the bill, that means we're paying for 85%. So 100% minus that 15% off leaves us with 85% to pay. So what that tells us is that £27.20 represents 85% of our original bill. And we can make a ratio out of that. So what we can say, if we leave with the percentage, is 85% represents £27.20 in terms of the cost. And then we'll move over to the right-hand side. Well, what we want to find is the original cost, which was 100%. 100% of the bill. So we fill in 100 here, press equals, and that will find out the original cost for us. So it was £32 before the money was taken off for the voucher. Okay, so as I explained, I'm just going to change the way around the ratio is. So menu and ratio again. I'm just going to select option one for the following four uses. And we can see the unknown is now on the left hand side of the right hand ratio. So the third use that we have is to write ratios in the form of n dot dot one. So let's take a look at the question. Write the ratio 5.5 to 3.75 in the form of n to one. And we need to give our answer to two decimal places. So it's fairly straightforward and it's helpful that we switch the ratio around because you can see that on the right hand side of the equals, it's the left hand side of the ratio that has the unknown, which is how it, our answer is set up here, n to one. So one's on the right hand side, the unknown n is on the left hand side. Obviously we just have to substitute x for n as the calculator's working in terms of x. So let's input the ratio that we know, 5.5 on the left hand side, 3.75 on the right hand side, and we know that we want one here, and that's one by default, so we can just press equals at this point. And here we have the left-hand side of the ratio, so 1.47 to two decimal places, and that's that question done. 
The fourth use would be to work out sides of similar shapes. Let's take a look at the question. So we've got triangle ABC and DEF are similar. And we can see that DEF is an enlargement of ABC. We've got to work out the value of X. That's the side here on the left hand side, the equivalent side to the 20 centimeters that we have on the enlarged shape. We can set this up so that the smaller shapes on the left hand side of the ratio, the larger shapes represented on the right hand side of the ratio. So we know that five to eight are equivalent sides here, similar sides. So we can set up the ratio five dot dot eight. And then we know that on the left hand side, we've got our unknown, which is X. And we know on the right hand side that that's 20 on the enlarged shape. So we input 20 equals, and then we'll just change this to decimal. We know that X side AB on the smaller triangle is 12.5 centimeters. The fifth use for ratio mode is working out side lengths using the sine rule. The sine rule is essentially a ratio. So we can use that to help work out a side. So in this question, we need to use the sine rule to work out the length BC. So what we have in the sine rule is we have a pair, a side and its opposite angle or the sine of its opposite angle uh, that we'd put in the ratio. So the pair that we have is eight. I'm just gonna put that in on the left hand side and that's related to the angle over here, sine 74, just close brackets. And then what we know the length BC would be paired with the sine of 35 over here. So over here where we have the right hand side of the unknown ratio is that we have sine 35. So let's input that. And what that will tell us then is the length of BC will be our unknown. So if you press equals, equals again just to confirm, then we know that the unknown side length BC is 4.77 on there. Just incidentally, it's not quite as good to use ratio mode to find the size of angles. You'd have to have things like inverse sine and such involved. It's probably much better to use calculate and a rearrangement of the rule in order to be able to work out an unknown angle. This is essentially just a shortcut perhaps for finding sides. The sixth use for ratio mode on the Casio class Wiz is for finding the number required for each strata in a stratified sample. So here we have a school with 650 students. We have them taking different languages, Greek, Spanish, German, and French. And we have an inspector who wants to look at the work of a stratified sample of 70 of these students. Remember, a stratified sample means that the sample needs to be representative of the proportion of the different languages the students are studying that is present in the population of 650 students. So let's just return to the input screen and reset. And what we want here on the left hand side is let's start with the number of Greek students. We know that's 145 out of 650 students. So there's a ratio right there. That is the ratio for the population of the students, we want the same ratio to be incorporated into our stratified sample. Now the total for our sample is 70, so I'm going to replace that here with 70, and X, which is our unknown, will tell us the number of students that are required to study Greek for our sample. So press equals, let's have a look at that as a decimal, 15.6, which means we need to have to think about either to having 15 or 16 students who study Greek in our sample. Uh, let's just go back, press AC just once. We don't want to clear it out because what we can do then is change this 145 to the next one, which is Spanish 121 equals. Everything else is going to remain the same. Press equals again and then SD. We know that for Spanish in the sample, we'd have 13 students. Press AC and we're back again. And then you can just continue just changing that first number to 198 for German, 186 for French or indeed just changing that number depending on however many you have in each category or each strata for your particular sample. So there we go, six uses for ratio mode on the Casio ClassWiz. Don't forget to subscribe for future videos. Thank you very much for watching this one and I'll see you next time on the Calculator Guide.